Okay, so we are ready to have the Excel solver do its magic. So we'll go to data and then go over to the right hand side where solver is. Again, you have to have the solver add-in activated for this to work. And if you have not done that, you can go ahead and Google it to learn how to do it. But basically it's under the file menu and add-ons. It's not activated by default for whatever reason. So to do these type of problems, you have to make sure that is activated. Okay, that being said. Now in the solver, we have a few parameters to set. In the top where it says set objective, that is our overall objective of this problem. And remember, our overall objective is to maximize our cash flow and our ending cash flow in 2017, which is at the beginning of 2017. So that's going to be our red cell in the lower right hand side. Again, I have named all these regions so they're easy to work with. So we're going to set our objective to end balance which is just the name of this reddish cell in the lower right. And we're going to select the radio button that says max because we want to maximize that value. Now where it says by changing variable cells, this is what we want Excel to find for us or to manipulate and do the mathematical model in the background for us. So we want Excel to find two things. We want it to find our long-term loan amount that we're going to take out in 20, 2007, if any. And then our series of short-term loans from 2007 down to 2016, if any. So we're going to have two regions we want Excel to find. And again, we name them. So this is just LT loan for long-term loan, comma, ST loan. Okay. So find our maximum possible in balance by manipulating or changing our long-term loan amount, if any, and our short-term loans, loan amounts, if any. Okay. Now, if you remember, we do have one constraint in this problem, and that is our minimum balance. Per company policy, our minimum cash balance at the end of any given year cannot fall below half a million dollars or $500,000. So we have to set this constraint where it says subject to constraint to meet that. And if you look at our model now, our minimum balance is well below half a million dollars every year up until what 2014. So we have to tell Excel that whatever it finds, if any, for long-term loan, whatever it finds for the series of short-term loans, if any, whatever it you know, comes up with must create an ending balance that is at least half a million dollars. So we'll click add and then we will go down so you can see exactly how it lines up. Ending balance must be greater than or equal to minimum balance. Ending balance must be greater than or equal to the minimum balance, just how it looks in the spreadsheet. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And just a few things, just to double check, make sure that make unconstrained variables non-negative is checked, OK? And that just makes sure, in this case, that our loans will not be negative. <laughs> so we will not be lending the bank money. And then Select solving method, make sure that is simplex LP because we're using a simplex linear programming model in Excel. So a double check, make sure everything is spelled correctly. See loan, ending balance, minimum balance. And if we click solve, Excel should fill in long-term loan and the short-term loan column, if any, that creates our highest possible cash balance at the beginning of 2017. Let's click solve, and there we go. Now if you notice, it says solver found a solution. All constraints are satisfied. Do you want to keep solver solution? And yes, we do, so we'll click OK. Now if you notice, we have a lot of crazy decimals in here. So I'm going to go through and just move them down to two decimal places. So let's take a couple minutes and interpret just exactly what we have here. Now, if you remember, we wanted Excel to find, if any, the long-term loan we should take out in year one 
in this series, if any, of short-term loans which you take out from 2007 to, to 2016. Now, if you look, Excel did that for us beautifully. If we go to the top cell on long-term loan, it is instructing us to take out a long-term loan at the 7% rate of $6.65 million in our first year. Now, along with that, it is suggesting we take out a loan, a short-term loan next to it of 0.85 million or $850,000 short-term. So that first year, we should take out a $6.65 million long-term loan, which will last 10 years, and then an $850,000 short-term loan, which of course will only last that year and have to be repaid at the beginning of the following year. So if we go down the short-term loan column, in 2008, we're instructed to take out a $3.4 million short-term loan, and then the following year, $8.21 million, and so forth, all the way down that column. Now, of course, if you notice that our large short-term loan amounts are during the years when our cash flow is the most negative. Okay, we get that first infusion of $6.65 million from the long-term loan. And then we have 3.4 short-term, 8.21 short-term, and then 6.49 short-term. And then it pretty much trails off, except for that one year in 2013. Those are the actual loan amounts that we should take out each year in order to meet our minimum balance requirements and then of course that carries over if it has interest into the next year. So if we look in 2008 under long-term interest we see that we're going to be making an interest payment of four hundred and seventy thousand dollars and that is the interest on our six point six five million dollar loan from 2007. Now because this is a ten-year loan we're using simple annual interest that will be the same each year throughout the term. So if you see, they are all negative 0.47 or $470,000 outflow each year all the way to the end of term. In our short-term interest column, if we go to the very top, there we're being told that we're going to be making an interest payment of about $90,000. And that should, be, that should make sense because the short-term loan we took out in 2007 was about $850,000. And again, we're rounding here because of our decimal places. But this $90,000 interest payment is on the loan we took out the previous year, short term, of $850,000. And if we go down, we have 0.34 on the $3.4 million loan we took out, and on, so on and so forth. So each one should be 10% of the preceding year's short-term loan all the way down. Now if we go over to the very bottom of long-term payback, the very bottom, you'll see it's negative $6.65 million. Now this should make sense because if we go back to the long-term loan we took out at the very beginning, it's $6.65 million. So those have to offset and that is the principal payback on our long-term loan. If we go to the top of short-term payback, you'll notice we have negative $0.85 million, or we have to pay back $850,000. And again, that should make sense because our short-term loan we took out in 2007 was $850,000. So each value in short-term payback okay, will be negative that corresponds with the loan that was taken out the year before. And finally, our last column is ending balance. First, if you notice, every ending balance value is greater than or equal to our minimum balance requirement or our minimum balance constraint. And if you remember in part one, I said this is kind of a backdoor minimization problem because all the loans and all the interest all have to be paid back in this 10 year period. So our ending balance for these first several years is exactly our minimum requirement. So we're not rolling around in cash here. We're taking loans out that are just enough to meet 
our cash flow uh, requirement on the far left and our ending balance requirement over on the far right. So we're just taking out enough money on our loans to cover our cash flow and to meet our minimum balance. And you can see that by how many of our ending balances are at the very bare minimum allowable in pin interest. And the final value to interpret is our reddish cell at the end of ending balance. And that is going to be our cash balance when everything is settled and done, the dust clears, all of our loans are paid back with interest, all of our cash flows have come in or gone out. So when everything is said and done, at the beginning of 2017, our cash balance will be $2.92 million. And remember, we told Excel to maximize that cash flow, to maximize our bank account in a manner that meets our cash flow requirements and our minimum balance requirements and does so. And after meeting all those requirements, what's the maximum cash balance we can have? And that value is $2.92 million. The great thing about these models is we can always go back in and type in different amounts and rerun the solver. So let's say we can talk the bank into a, a lower long-term interest rate. Well, we could go in the LT rate and just change that to 6%. And then we could rerun the solver and it would give us new values, new loan amounts, probably a higher long-term loan given the lower interest rate, but you know, I can't say that for sure. But we could rerun this with different rates and different minimum cash requirements. And if we had a change to our cash flow forecast, so that's say management came back in you know two months and said, oh, we, we redid the numbers and we think our cash flow might be a little bit different. Well, we could just go into this model and change the cash flow column to whatever our new estimates are, rerun the solver, and Excel will find new loan values for us. It's just, it's amazing. Now, of course, a large company is going to have a much, much, much more complex cash flow model than, than this one. But, you know, for a small business or you know, even a medium-sized business, this sort of uh, model can work. You know, it's changeable, it's flexible, and it's easy to interpret, and it allows us to plan, you know, far out in the future. And that's what is, to me, very beautiful and elegant about these sorts of models. Now, I'm going to do a couple more things just to answer a few more questions about some of the original things we asked. And we'll do that here just real quick, and I promise we'll be done. I remember one thing I asked in my questions was, you know, how much, how much total interest are we going to pay? So I'm just going to spell right for one. Total interest. Now, for our long-term interest, I'm just going to do a simple formula equals sum. I'm going to select that whole column. Enter, and there we go. So we're going to pay a total pay out $4.65 million in interest on the long-term loan. Now we can do the same thing for our short-term interest column. And I put a little underscore in there, fix that. There we go. So we're going to pay 2.43 million dollars in short-term interest. So we can say grand total. I'll move that over. This will be the sum of those two. So sum of those two. And here we can see that over the course, over the course of this 10-year financing project, we are going to be paying JK Morgan, $7.08 million in interest. So $7,080,000 in interest over this 10 year period. Now, another cool question to ask is, well, how much are they lending us in total? So I'm, I'm just gonna be crude here. I'm just gonna put very fast formulas equals sum of long-term loan. I don't need to do the whole column, but I will. 
and this will be some of the short-term loans. There we go. Now if we see, if we add these together, and again, I'm going to be very crude, very messy. I'm going to sum those two. Now let's take a look here. Over the course of this 10-year period, we are going to borrow $30.91 million. Right here. Now, on that $30.91 million, we are going to be paying J.K. Morgan $7.08 million. You can do some simple math to figure out what kind of money the bank is going to be making uh, on us. So if we equal our loan amount divided by, sorry, our interest amount divided by our total loans, well, you can see that J.K. Morgan is making almost 23% gain on that those loans. And now you know how banks make their money. In summary, what we've done, we've, we've helped pin interest meet their cash uh, flow problems. So we have helped them through a series of long, a long-term loan and a series of short-term loans meet their cash flow needs in a way that meets their minimum balance requirement of half a million dollars and also maximizes their ending cash balance at $2.92 million. And of course, in the end, the banks don't do so bad either. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.